This afternoon, I'm gonna build a mobile app. iOS and Android, fully native functionality, real database, real data, fully secure and scalable. And towards the end of the video, I'll show you how I deploy this app to the App Store. And I'll just go to make coffee while the code writes itself. I don't use any of these online AI platforms to build apps. That industry is incredibly unstable. There's a constant stream of new app builder platforms popping up and dying. And I have no intention of constantly having to rewrite my app every six months. Paradoxically, the platforms that promise to make you a mobile app all use a web-based interface to do it. And trust me, mobile apps and websites are not the same. There's actually a far superior tool for visualizing how your mobile app will look and feel in real time as the AI model builds it out, a tool that you probably already have, a phone. Because when your app is being built by an AI from your own laptop, you can develop it in real time and see the app being constructed on your own device. And then when it's ready, you'll push it up to the app stores. This week's app is a niche restaurant finder. This is a concept similar to Happy Cow, which is an app doing about 14 million a year in revenue. And it's really quite a simple concept, but it doesn't need to be an app like this. I could as easily be making an app for internal use at an organization, a companion app for a brick and mortar business, any kind of mobile app at all. Anyway, my app happens to be a sub-niche of restaurant finder apps that help people find restaurants specializing in gluten-free meals. I will be using AI to write the actual code for me, but here's the thing that most people miss when trying out AI tools for building apps. AI works best when there is structure, conventions, and a plan for the app architecture already in place. I don't prompt an app into existence from a blank slate because AI is not perfect, it's a tool, and it works best when given structure, examples, and rules. I could be writing the next billion dollar AI, satellite, blockchain, super app, or I could be writing a dating app for goat herders. But all the same, the first draft of either of these apps probably needs social sign-in, push notifications, a back-end interface, an isolated environment for testing and development and so on. And there exist templates with this set up already. I have an AI prompt here I use to automatically download and set up one of these templates. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in getting these prompts and templates yourself. Now, I'll just pop open any AI editor, and that's the cool thing. There is no need to vendor lock yourself to any provider. Popular choices for AI editors today in early 2026 are Cursor, Claude Code, Anti-Gravity, and Codex. And these come from the really big AI providers. There's no middleman. But if, say, you start your project in Cursor, but you find you don't like it, you can literally switch to Claude Code or Codex or whatever the shiny new AI coding agent of the day is. There is zero vendor lock. I like Claude code, so I'm gonna open it up, bang in my prompt, and it'll download and set up the app template for me. Now that that's done, the AI agent is telling me where my project files are stored, and it's also given me the next step. And note that this terminal where I'm going to type this command is already on your laptop. You just might not have realized you have it. The magic command is npx expo start. This is going to expose a QR code. And now I actually have a skeleton version of my app running right here. If I made some changes, let's say I changed the background color from white to this disgusting purple. After I hit save, the app will actually reload and reflect that new color immediately. And the template has already explained to the AI about the coding methods it prefers, and given it links to all the current documentation it needs, it's all set up already. The template and the AI prompt have also already set up authentication for me. So I'll sign in with Google. And now we have a solid base to build any app on top of. By the way, because I'm using a real device and not a web UI, I can actually test native features immediately. I can ask the AI agent to send a test notification to my phone and it'll just work. And there it is. 
This is all running on my laptop and the phone is connected to my computer via my own Wi-Fi network, so no need to even plug in a USB cable to connect them. Time to give my app a name and do some brainstorming. I think I'll call the app Celia. For brainstorming and concept work, my top pick is actually ChatGPT. I'm gonna create a meta prompt so that the AI will organize and direct my random thoughts into something the coding agent will like. Here we go. I want you to create a prompt to be pasted into an AI coding agent. The code base is already set up with the right tech and instructions for architecture, so don't worry about this. I just need to refine the initial prompt. This app is called Celia. S C E L I A. The overall vibe, color palette, and layout, and anything else that seems important. Okay, so now I have my transcription from ChatGPT. I'm gonna run this and then copy the prompt that it gives me. So here we go, final prompt. And it's definitely worth having a read through this and make sure that the prompt is the way you want it to be. Make any tweaks you need to. So I'm gonna go ahead again and open up Claude and just paste this prompt that I got from ChatGPT. And I've actually prompted Claude to ask me questions about the app. So what vibe do I want? I think a warm and cozy looks cool. We can go with earth tones for the color palette. I'll make the cards look image first, horizontal chips, and I'll submit those answers. And now Claude is gonna dive in and do its thing. It's gonna analyze the template, see what all the best practices are, and then it's gonna start building out the application. At this point, I can just go make a cup of coffee and I'll see how it looks when I get back. So Claude code is done and it's giving me the NPX expo start command so I can go and check it out. Before I do that though, I'm gonna need a home screen logo. And so I've gone in here to Canva to whip one up. You can generate these images with whatever tools you are comfortable with. You can also use ChatGPT or a different AI to generate the images for you. The home screen icon must be square with a solid background. I've also gone onto a free website to grab the loading screen animation. There's a couple of examples that you can get here, but this is just an optional bit of polish. So now, once again, I can go ahead and type npx expo start, grab the QR code, open it up in my phone, and hopefully the app will be ready. Here's my loading animation, and there it is. We've got a restaurant app. Now bear in mind that I did one shot this, so there's probably gonna be bits and pieces that don't work perfectly, but let's try tapping on a restaurant. Cool, and I can give it a star rating, nice, four stars. I'll give it a like. And the infinite scroll will keep going and it will load more entries from the database as I scroll. Then I got the explore tab. Looks like I can filter by the different tags for the restaurants. I can search for a restaurant, so let's say I'm looking for parallel lines. Nice, and there it is. I can also add a restaurant. We'll call it my fun restaurant. And this is gonna be modern. I can give it a photo and I can add the restaurant. At this point, I'm gonna start getting some errors. And of course, because one-shotting an application is very difficult. In fact, the best thing to do is usually to go through each screen one at a time and build out the application with a more managed, purposeful flow. And you can absolutely do that with these tools. A really good, really robust app is gonna take some time. And that is absolutely the point. But for a one shot, this is really very impressive what this has done. And that's the power of Claude code. So now my app works, but I want to share it with the world. So it's time to deploy it to the app store. But first I have to have to think about where my user data actually lives. The template and the prompt were able to set up a database on my laptop. And for this, I'm using Supabase. This gives me a user interface where I can mess around with my data. For example, if I selected this entry for restaurants and I changed the text from sunrise to moonrise, this change actually feeds into my app. So all I have to do is drag to refresh and now it will say moonrise social. But this is only happening here on my laptop. So now I'll head over to supabase.com and create the production version of my database. I'll take the credentials from supabase.com and paste them into my app's configuration file so it knows where to look for the database when it arrives to the app store. 
At this point, I am ready to deploy the app to the App Store. Now, please note that you can't deploy an app to the Apple App Store without paying the yearly $99 fee to Apple. This is totally unavoidable. With that said, it's time for another magic command. NPX test flight. This command will actually log me into my Apple developer account, ask a few questions, and then it will automatically deploy the app to the App Store. Before this command existed, it was such a nightmare to set this up. You had to mess around with signing keys and distribution certificates and provisioning profiles, but now this is all just taken care of for you with this command. Once it's done, I can download an app that Apple provides called TestFlight and use that to install my production version of the app on my phone. I can also distribute this to any number of friends and beta testers to help test it out. After I've refined the app and gotten some feedback from internal testers, the final step is to fill out the distribution details the App Store asks for. Things like testing instructions for the reviewers, data declarations, and screenshots for the App Store listing. And then I hit add for review. Building an app without coding experience is definitely possible in 2026. There are, of course, a few extra details here that I didn't have time to cover in this short video, but hopefully you can see that what I've done here is absolutely possible, and you can make any number of real mobile apps with it. Mobile apps are still a lot of work, and you will iterate and improve on the app over many months or even years, but this system of working locally is designed with long-term maintenance in mind. If you have an app concept that you want to get off the ground, check out the link in the description and I can help you get set up and guide you on that journey. Subscribe for more mobile app development content and I will see you in the next one.